Hello everyone. Today I will talk to you about fossil fuels. So the four main types of fossil fuels are coal, natural gas, propane, and petroleum. So first we'll talk about the formation of fossil fuels. Coal was created from the remains of plants that lived 100 to 400 me million years ago. Uh, so these plants were trapped in the swampy water. So then we had dirt gathering above them and that caused a lot of heat and pressure on these plants causing a decay and the energy was trapped inside these decaying plants, turning slowly into coal. While natural gas, propane, and petroleum is created by the remains of tiny sea plants and animals. So, the same way also these tiny sea plants and animals were trapped and in millions of years there was a lot of heat and pressure conditions causing these plants and animals to turn into gas and into oil. Now production. Obviously, fossil fuels are non-renewable sources of energy because it takes millions of years to create them. So we can't recreate them in a short time. But how do we produce them? How do we remove them from the ground and make them in the form that is usable? So if we talk about coal first, there are two ways to remove coal from the ground, either surface mining or underground mining. Surface mining is used when the coal is close to the earth's surface. So let's say, for example, this is a, the base here, and here we have a layer of rich coal. that we want to extract. On top of it, there is a layer of soil that we call the overburden. So what happens here is that the overburden is removed first and it's stored aside. Then the coal is removed and eventually the overburden is put back into place. But then it's also covered with some topsoil that is graded, fertilized, and seeded to restore the biological balance of the area and also to prevent erosion. The other type of mining is underground mining and there are several methods for underground mining. One of them is the room and pillar method and it's used when the coal is very deep underground and what they basically do is that they extract the coal by creating rooms underground but they have to leave pillars to support the top and prevent it from falling down. That's why it's very in a uneconomic because they have to leave a lot of the coal behind, sometimes as much as half 
of the coal. The other method is the long wall mining. where the coal is allowed to collapse in a controlled manner. And this method is better because it allows huge blocks of coal to be removed without leaving anything behind. So normally the surface mining is the more preferred method but when the coal is deep underground, the underground mining is the method used. Now, when it comes to extracting petroleum, petroleum is extracted using wells, where they extract it as a mixture of petroleum products. Then it is carried to refineries where it is separated into different fuels and byproducts. The most important was one is gasoline, but there are other products like diesel fuel, like heating oil, and like jet fuel. And all that is possible because these different products have different boiling points, which means that we can boil them to a certain degree where only one of them will evaporate. And we gather it again. Then to a different boiling point where the other product will evaporate. And we collect it again and so on. This method is called fractional distillation and I would like you to watch a movie about fractional distillation. I have shared the link with you. And now natural gas. Natural gas is trapped underground in rocks and it is extracted either from the gas beds or coal beds or landfills. So, the gas fields are searched by different experiments like small explosions or sending uh, sound waves to indicate whether there's gas in the suspected fields because it's very expensive to drill a field or a well without making sure that there is gas. Still, it not, it's not always uh, accurate and only about like 48% according to your reading material produces gas. The other option is coal beds. So actually the natural gas also is present with coal or we extract coal and only recently new techniques were formed to extract that natural gas from the coal, sorry, from the coal beds. But the interesting part is that natural gas is also produced in landfills. So it's been noticed that the landfills produce natural gas from decaying garbage. That's why there's a debate whether natural gas is a renewable or non-renewable energy. Because garbage is decaying, we're getting natural gas from it, it's not taking it millions of years to decay and form the natural gas. Scientists are creating new methods to use this natural gas from the landfills and normally right now it's used right in the landfills operating all the facilities that work on garbage. Okay, so for natural gas, we have the gas fields where we drill to get the gas and the only purpose for drilling 
is to find a gas field, but we have other sources where natural gas can, make, can be present with coal or can be present from decaying garbage. Now we'll move to the last fossil fuel or propane. And before we talk about propane, it is useful to know that natural gas is 90% methane, 5% propane, and 5% other gases. So when natural gas is moved to the plants where it's purified, we extract propane from it. So propane is extracted from the natural gas. That is the first method. The second method, propane is also or can also be extracted from petroleum. So propane can be also extracted from the petroleum gas wells when the petroleum is refined and separated into its products. And now we'll talk about transportation of fossil fuels. So first talking about coal transportation. Coal transportation is very important because it is one of the most difficult fossil fuels to transport. It is transported by trains, by ships, by trucks, and mainly it's very expensive. That's why many times the power plants are built close to coal mines to minimize the transportation costs. It is much easier with petroleum products, which can be transported by pipelines. And these pipelines include pump stations, which keep pumping the petroleum and making sure it is moving with a sufficient speed, which normally is 20 to 100 miles apart and uh, allows it to move in speeds around 5 miles per hour. Same for natural gas. Natural gas can be shipped or transported actually, transported by pipes. And here we also have like compressor stations that are similar to the pumping station that ensure the natural gas is under sufficient pressure to move around 15 miles per hour. And now propane. What's special about propane that it's a gas uh, in room temperature and pressure. But if we subject it to a sufficient pressure, it, we can liquefy it. And that will make it much com more compact and easier to transport. So this is the used method. They liquefy it first and then they transport it. It is used by uh, to. <laughs> it is transported by pipelines to what we call distribution terminals, which are bulk distribution and storage stations. And then from these distribution terminals, it is distributed to uh, different stores and shops using trucks using. Uh, railroads, using ships, and so. So this is all I wanted to tell you today about the fossil fuels. Um, enjoy your project and see you in class. Thank you.